The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 436. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is known as the No Excuse Mom, and I'm really excited to have her on and share her story with us today. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Maria Kang. Maria, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to our listeners. Hi, Sheena. Thanks for having me. Well, as you said, I'm widely known as No Excuse Mom. I had a viral photo with my children. That came to Facebook a few years ago, and it said, what's your excuse? And so I really have that tough love kind of standpoint when it comes to anything with life, business, work, marriage. And I say it so strongly that there should be no excuses for keeping your health a priority because obviously health is a huge issue in America and throughout the world. But, you know, it's the only vehicle that you have that's traveling your spirit throughout this world. But anyways, most people know me as No Excuse Mom. I published a book called The No More Excuses Diet. I own care homes for the elderly here in Sacramento, and I have three children who are ages 8, 7, and 5 right now. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And Maria, what's your cultural background? I am half Filipina, half Chinese. Thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? You know, one of the things that I have written on the front of my journal for several years now is that thoughts become things. And... I don't know if it's a self-confidence quote so much as it's a, something that tries to keep me focused on what I want, which is, you know, I want to be healthy. I want to be, you know, financially stable. I want to have a, a long marriage. And when I think of things that go downhill, like when I start to complain, you know, when people start to blame, it really starts to create this snowball effect. So I really try to keep my thoughts positive because everything in life is bought about action and manifesting any type of goal and you you, you have to be careful what you manifest when you think negative thoughts so I definitely think that thoughts become things is a big phrase that I use on a daily basis. Thanks for sharing that. And I think, you know, that's a great self-confidence quote, especially, you know, when it comes to doing what we want, dreaming about, you know, turning our dreams into reality, you know, takes a lot of confidence to go out there and do the things that we love. And, you know, they always say you bring about what you think about. So it is really important you know, what you mentioned, what you're manifesting, that you're attracting, you know, the good things in your life. And, you know, I'm not saying that, you know, you're not going to have bad days, but it might be easier to kind of switch it the more you work on yourself and the more that you can realize like you're this great person who can turn your thoughts into things. So thanks for sharing that. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? I think self-confidence is Really, and I remember saying this to my stepdaughter recently at her birthday, and it's really just a belief in yourself and not really giving a F about anybody else and what they think or their opinion. You know, it's knowing that you're going the right path or you believe in the right things. And I know that as any woman, it's, it's really tough to have confidence in yourself. And I remember distinctly in my high school years, around sophomore year, when I finally just stopped caring about how people viewed me or how people perceived anything that I did, how I, what, I, what clothes I wore, what friends I was with. And it really changed everything. And so I think that when you have the confidence to say, this is what I want, or this is who I am, take it or leave it. I mean, you can do incredible things with that self-belief. Thanks for sharing that. And that's a great definition that you mentioned. And, you know, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Well, you know, I've gone through stages of confidence and no confidence. You know, I think we all go through seasons and waves. And like I mentioned, you know, growing up, I was, you know, I'm Asian. I don't think there was a lot of Asians around me when I was growing up. I don't, I didn't find my particular beauty attractive in the media because I never saw it. So, I mean, I didn't, I always wanted to have blonde hair and blue eyes. So growing up, I... I lacked confidence in my flat nose and my dark hair and my just my thicker physique. And then and then coming into high school, I just stopped caring so much. And I started seeing that, you know, having full lips and pretty skin and all that was is, is fine. And, and having um, being smart and wanting to become a leader because I, I already still showed a lot of traits of leadership 
growing up. I just started to embrace who I was. And then, um, you know, going into college and obviously in your 20s, I'm in my 30s now, but I mean, I lacked confidence in my abilities, lacked confidence in my purpose. You know, you go in and out of these stages. And I think like any other person, woman or man, life is a lot darker when you don't believe in yourself. You know, life is a lot frustrating and and depressing. And so, but I would say the majority of my life today is really a lot of confidence. You know, I really have come to terms with, you know, who I am and my, my ability to make things happen. Thanks for sharing that. And I think that's something we all go through, right? Especially that lacking in belief that we're capable of, you know, creating something that we love to do or going in that right path. And was there in the a moment in your life when you realized, you know, you, you were, you know, more than enough to go out there and be the person that you are today? Like, what was that aha moment? Well, you know, one of the things that besides my Asian background that's helped steer kind of my personality and my values is my craft, my Catholic faith. You know, I'm Christian. I was born and raised with those values. And so, you know, having, knowing that I was very prayerful as a child, you know, because we, ha- we lack so much control on a daily, I mean, we have no control, period. But when you let go and you let God and you just have faith that things are happening for a reason and that there's purpose behind each pain, that really helped me to remain confident and faithful and trustful on the process. And so if I were to say one distinct moment uh, that has really cleared the path for me today, and my now that I'm turning my 37 this year, it was in my 20s when even though I, I used to compete in pageants, I did fitness competitions, I graduated with double majors from UC Davis, and I traveled the world. And I was on, you know, I did a lot of print work, too. And, you know, these were all favors because I wasn't a, a model per se. But I was I was somebody who looked like she should have a lot of confidence. But I didn't. And it was really eye opening to just feel like you didn't have anything when it looked like you had everything. And so it wasn't until I was more of a born again Christian in my 20s when I realized that I I am not what I look like. I'm not things that I own. I am not the things that I do. You know, I'm a child of God and, you know, I have a purpose and I could die tomorrow and and I can, and I've reconciled with every what everyone, you know, in my my present and my past. And so it was really when I found my faith again and my belief in God and my trust in God when my confidence really changed. Thanks for sharing that. And you know, because of that realization, what's your life been like now? I have an incredible life. I have a nonprofit that's thriving. We have free mom groups and over 25 countries. And these mothers, they're so inspiring. They have so much confidence. I mean, they are hosting free workouts in their park and community centers to create community and connect other families so that we can all go on this journey towards being healthy. So these mothers are incredibly confident. And, you know, to be part of that process with them, having this nonprofit is really, you know, a source of joy and happiness and obviously confidence for myself. You know, I have a care home. I have three of them. And you can visit us at sacramentocarehomes.com. But, you know, to be responsible for 18 residents, you know, who are in their last golden years of life, you know, and to to have established this business within my community and to provide the service. I mean, that really brings value on a daily basis. Obviously, having children, you know, who are second, first, and preschool ages. You know, I I live a very fulfilled life. You know, one of the things that I do every single morning is I set my professional, my personal, my physical goals. I call it my three Ps, and I mentioned this in my book, The No More Excuses Diet. But um, it's really important to be balanced, you know, knowing that you are going towards this path and you're not just focusing on one part of that journey. So, I mean, I train every day. I spend time with my children every day. I work hard every day. And so I would say that obviously the confidence and my faith in God and and all of that good stuff is what helps me to live such a fulfilling life as I do right now. Thanks for sharing that. And, you know, I really, um, I think it's great that you've created a nonprofit that's been, you know, widely recognized in over 25 countries. And, you know, women are just embracing it. And sometimes we forget that we don't have to be in this journey alone. Like having a support system really, you know, increases our, our confidence in the process. And, you know, I really love that tip that you mentioned about the three P's in life, which is great. You know, it just really gives you that perspective is on like what what is it about you, you know, in all aspects of your life. So thanks for sharing that. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do or check out, you know, your nonprofit, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? 
Sure. So firstly, let me add on to what you just said. I think that, you know, I mentioned this with fitness and with, you know, obviously health, moms in the community, and even professionally and personally, everything really starts with accountability. You know, whether it's in the beginning, it's your parents when you're young. And then as you grow up, you know, you really have to find self-motivation. But oftentimes it's hard to find that self-motivation. Or even that confidence within yourself, that's why it's important to be amongst other people who give you that energy, who who love you, who support you. I mean, really, the people around you are really reflections of who you are, who you believe you are. So if you're around people who think that you're unattractive or that you're worthless, you know, then you're going to feel that way. And so it's really important to be accountable to people that have high expectations of you. And so that's what I really love about No Excuse Moms. And that's one of the things that I think about constantly when, I, when I'm when i around other people, you know, what reflection am I giving back to them? But people can find us at noexcusemom.com. They can find, they can put in their zip code or their city or their country and they can find their nearest location. If you can't find one, we always encourage new leaders. You don't have to be a trained fitness professional. You just have to be incredibly passionate. And then um, I have my website, MariaKang.com. That's K-A-N-G. And um, my care homes, SacramentoCareHomes.com. So they can find me on those three places, social media. All my social media links are attached to my website. So you could just click those links and you'll find me anywhere on Snapchat, on Instagram, and Facebook. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And to our listeners, if you want to connect with Maria, you can also head on over to the TaoofSelfConfidence.com and search for Maria's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I just really want to thank Maria for taking the time to share her story and tips with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Maria. You're welcome. Thanks again. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. Get your free self-talk tape for building self-confidence by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.